everyone, this is Dr. Mac again with my video number seven. Today's video is all about a bit of clinical tip on doing your class four composite. I've been seeing a lot of uh, people's work with online assessments that I've been doing now. And um, with class four composites, it's just, I think it's one of the most easiest tasks. If you get it, I think you're very lucky in the exam if you get a class four instead of a complex composite. However, you need to know the right technique, how to do it. And after seeing so many works, I've been realizing, I think the major problem there is you still don't know, majority of the people still don't know uh, how to actually hold their mileage strip. Because in my opinion, the entire class for composite is depending on how you hold your mileage strip. If you can hold this strip really well and exactly place it to what you need, your class for composite is just going to be so ideal and that you would be surprised how good that is. But it's all about how you hold it. So today's video, I thought I'll share with you guys, not the whole class for composite, it's just really hard for me to do. However, I'll just share with you technique, my technique, how to hold the mileage strip in place. And that would be like a game changer for your class four, okay? First thing you need to understand when we talk about class four composites is it's a high aesthetic zone, okay? They cannot be any marks. They cannot be any porosities, okay? Nicely clean, nicely polished. It should be like a beautiful, you know, composite going on there. You can't have those marks and black spots and porosities going on and those air bubbles flowing in those class fours, no. There's a difference when you do anterior and posterior composite, this one, I know it sounds easy majority of the time and it is easy as well, but a lot of time people, you know, don't focus on the actual aspects of it and then they fail in the exam, okay? The major concept, whenever you do any restoration task, you have to make sure your contact is your key. Contact should be clean. There shouldn't be any excess there. You should hear a nice tuck when you run the floss. There shouldn't be any overhang, okay? Your mesial side always is a bit more flatter, distal is always a bit more rounder, okay? So the angles are also important, the line angles are important, the way you curve it when it's coming towards the occlusal is also important. There are a couple of aspects going on. However, the major important points are the contact should be clean like any restoration task. No excess, no overhangs, highly polished, highly clean, no porosities, no air bubbles, okay? Once the criteria is clear, now let's talk about how majority of the people do a, a mileage strip. Let's turn this around possibly. So how a majority of the people do it is this way. That's how majority of the population do. Now, that's completely wrong. And guys, I feel for you all because <laughs> I used to do that at the, as well at the start until I learned the actual technique. So if you do it composite this way, actually palatal, so let's do it this way because you want to make the palatal first. Now, this is a very poor technique. You will keep holding it. You will keep trying to do it this way and then it doesn't work very well. This is what a majority of the people try to do. Doesn't work very well. Okay, hope you all can see very clearly. So this is a big cross, yeah? What you need to understand it, if it's the left side tooth or that, okay? You come from that side, opposite side if it's this side too, you come from the opposite side. Now, what you need to basically do is, so look carefully, look very carefully, that what I'm trying to do here. Now this is something 
you need for class four composites. So come from the opposite side. This has a nice curve to it. Once you have this sorted, now comes to your hand movement. I'm not wearing a glove, but once you wear a glove, this can actually move across really well. Yeah. So what you need to do is press it there at a way that it forms like a smiley, a small smiley at the occlusal inside the incisal surface. Yeah. So once you have that nice smiley, hold it with the thumb there. Yep. Yeah. And keep moving your thumb, you uh, moving your finger, not your thumb. And you will automatically, the thumb should be a bit more less loose, less tight, a bit loose. And then you keep moving your finger and see where you form that nice smiley, yeah? As soon as you see that nice smiley going on, that's where you lock the thumb. And then it doesn't move. Now, another trick to that is, you take your ball burnisher, yeah? And once you have a nice smiley, because we need that nice marginal ridge as well, with the help of a ball burnisher, you just burnish it there. Very gently, yeah? Very gentle strokes. Now if you see that smiley is even, even better. And that marginal ridge will never be flat. It would be like a nice nice texture to it and once you hold it like that put a wedge okay lock that in place Again, make sure the finger is good. Have that nice marginal ridge going. Lock that nicely. See how that smiley is forming? That's what you need. Now what you need to do is make the palatal first. Once you've cured it, remove the whole thing and double check. Make sure your palatal is good. There's no overhang. There is no excess going underneath. Your palatal has a nice marginal ridge to it. Nice, like, you know, this inside is a bit grooved in. That's marginal ridge is more an enveloped going in around the side. Once this is nice and clean, you start making your uh, buckle and uh, labial and the contact, the proximal side. Yeah and then you cure it. At this moment, if you feel that that's not good, the palatal is not good, I would suggest break it, because it's like a thin, 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 paper thin palatal shell, right? You break it, and then you do it again. Because trust me, guys, creating a palatal shell takes 15 seconds, even less. However, correcting that excess, it's gonna take you five to 10 minutes, waste a lot more time. So. You initiate in a way that if there's an issue, you just break it immediately, okay? So this is my tip for you guys today for a class four composite. Just a quick recap, instead of going with this technique and holding it there, what I want you guys to do is, if it's this side to come from the opposite side, okay? The thumb should not be tied a bit, let loose at the moment. Let your finger do the movement. Make sure, keep moving your finger in a way, forms a nice smiley. Once you feel that is a nice thing moving on there, then connect your thumb there and hold it in place. Then with the help of a ball burnisher, just do these nice strokes there to just have that nice marginal ridge coming out. Then have a nice, very thin layer on the palatal first, cure it, remove it. Make sure, don't forget the wedge, wedge very important here. Yeah? Check it, if you like it, good, break it, otherwise do it again. If you do the class four composite with this technique, trust me, it'd be a lot more easier and a lot more quicker. 
and your results would be night and day. So that's my quick tip for you today for class four composite. Hope that helps everyone. Uh, any feedback would be greatly appreciated. Hope you all have a great day and we'll see you all with another clinical tip and trick or possibly another video. All right, have a great day, everyone. Bye.